Hi everyone, today we're going to be using Microsoft Excel to look at simple interest and compound interest. We've got three variables here in our template, principal, interest rate and the time period. We're looking at simple interest in the first three columns and then in columns E to G we're looking at compound interest. Under simple interest we've got period, interest and the value of the investment. Same for compound interest. What we want to do today is just fill out all these columns. Let's get started. Okay, so we want some default values for the principal interest rate and the time period. So we're going to have some simple values. So for principal, we're going to have $1,000. Interest rate is going to be 0.01 or 1%. And the time period is going to go up to 20. Next, we'll just change the format of these cells. So for principal, we want to change the format to be a currency. The interest rate is going to be a percentage. And the time period can be left as a general number. Okay, awesome. So let's take a look at our first column for simple interest, which is time period. We want to have the time period of 20. So we need to start off with one and go all the way up to 20. Remember that Excel can autofill your cells. So just grab a few of your cells. And as long as there is a pattern, Excel will follow that pattern. Grab the bottom right of the cell and drag it down until you reach 20. Okay, so we finished our first column. Awesome. Let's take a look at interest. If you hover over the title here, interest, you can see that we want to use the formula. The interest is equal to the principal amount multiplied by the rate multiplied by the number of time periods. Okay, so make sure you type an equal sign so Excel knows you're starting a formula. We want to grab our principal amount and we want to do an absolute reference, which means we want to hit the F4 button so that B3 becomes dollar sign B dollar sign 3. The reason for doing this is when we autofill the cell later, we want to always reference this cell and make sure that this cell does not move around. Okay, so we're kind of fixing it. Okay, so the principal amount is being multiplied with the interest rate. So multiply with the interest rate. Again, we want to fix that cell, make it an absolute reference. So we'll hit F4 dollar sign B dollar sign 4. And then optional, we can times that by the period one and we can fix that as well. This is what our formula looks like and we'll just hit the enter button. The interest rate for one time period is going to be $10. And because it's simple interest, if we drag this down, we should see that it is always $10. Let's take a look at the formula for B28. You can see that it is the same as the formula we put in. And that's because we've done an absolute reference, meaning we're always going to refer to the cells B3, B4, as well as A9. Okay, fantastic. And we're on to our last column for simple interest. We're looking for the value of the investment. Let's hover over the title here, and it says that we need to do two equations here. When N is equal to 1, so when the period is equal to 1, add the fixed interest payment to the principal. So we'll start off with that one. We'll press equals to start off our formula. We want to add the interest with the principal amount, which is $1,000. So the value of the investment after one time period or one year is going to be $1,010. Okay, so that completes our first part. The second part is when N is bigger than one, add the fixed interest to the value of the investment in the previous period. Okay, so it gets a little bit more complicated here. Let's type our equal sign and we are going to grab the interest, which is $10. And we're going to add it on to the previous value of the investment, which is $1,010. Okay, so we want to do a relative reference here. So we're going to leave the formula as it is. Press enter. And the value of the investment after two years is going to be $1,020. Okay, once we've got that formula, we're actually going to autofill the rest of the cells. Take a look at the formula in cell C28. It's referring to the cell B28 and C27, which is what we want. So the value of the investment after 20 years is going to be $1,200. Next, we'll take a look at the compound interest table. The first column there is period, and we can just copy and paste the periods from the simple interest table. Control C. Come up to the cell E9 and then Control V and press Enter. 
To complete interest, we'll take a look at the instructions here. In compound interest, the interest changes each period. When n is equal to 1, use i is equal to prn, so the simple interest formula. We've done this one before, so we'll just do equals the principal multiplied by the rate multiplied by one time period. We don't mind that this is a relative reference here because we're not going to order fill this. So press enter. We'll get $10. We'll just leave F10 for now and we'll come up to the value of the investment. When n is equal to 1, add the interest to the principal. Okay, so we have n is equal to 1 here. Press equals. We're going to add this interest with the principal amount. The answer, and we've got $1,010. So you can see that in simple interest and compound interest, the value of the investment after one time period is the same. So we have $1,010 for both. We'll come down to the cell F2, and when n is greater than 1, use i is equal to PRN, except the P amount is the value of the investment in the previous period. Okay, so it gets a little bit more complicated here. We'll press equals, grab the value of the investment in the previous period, which is $1,010, and we're going to multiply that by the interest rate. We want the interest rate to be an absolute reference, so we'll hit F4. And then we can multiply that by one time period. Hit enter. And we can see that the interest has changed to become $10.10. We'll just grab that cell and we can auto fill the rest of the cells so that the rest of the cells should have the same formula. Grab a cell, any cell. So take a look at F28 and just take a look at the formula to check that it's right. It's referring to the cell G27, so the value of the previous investment, and it's also um, referring to the interest rate, which is an absolute reference, and then we're looking at one time period. So we know that the formula is correct. These values will change once we have the correct value of the investment in the G column. So hit enter, and then we'll take a look at our final column. When n is greater than 1, add the interest to the value of the investment in the previous period. Okay, so press equals, grab the interest amount, and we're going to add that with the value of the investment in the previous um, period, which is 1010. Hit enter, and we can see that two cells changed here. The cell G10 and the cell F11. So the value of the investment after two time periods is going to be $1,020.10. We can then auto fill the cells and we've completed our table for compound interest. Next, we can take a look at the difference between the value of the investments. So in the cell A30, we can just do difference and a formula where we're going to grab G28 and subtract it with C28. Press enter and we can see the difference in the amounts is 20.19. Next we'll take a look at graphing. Grab the value of the investments for simple interest, press insert, recommended charts, and then a line graph. We also want to put the value of the investments for compound interest onto the same chart. So grab the points, right click, select data. We're going to add a series. We're going to call it compound interest. X values are going to be our period and the Y values are going to be the value of the investment. Hit enter and then press OK. We can change the other series to be simple interest. There's not much to see here. That's because we have quite a low interest rate as well as a low principal amount. So how about we up this and make this 100,000. And then the interest rate, we can change it to maybe 10. 
we see that if we have a larger principal and a larger interest rate, we have a greater difference in the value of the investment. Next, we're going to fix our titles. The first one is chart title. We're going to make that simple interest versus compound interest. Double click the graph and we should be able to add some chart elements. The first one we should do is legend. This is because we have two data sets, one for simple interest and the other one for compound interest. Go back to add chart elements for axis titles for primary horizontal and primary vertical. So this one should be years. And the vertical one will be the value of the investment. Now it's over to you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video. There are investigation questions over on the next tab here where you can explore what happens to the table and graph as you change the principal and the interest rate. Bye for now. Thank you for watching this video. When you subscribe to Class Notes, you will learn more about maths and stay updated with weekly videos and learning material. Turn on your notifications today and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Until next time.